Thursday. Last day of the week, my Friday. Yay. So today, I think I'm going to talk a little bit about politics. I was listening to a podcast yesterday, and the presenters kept talking about um, how all these conservatives jump in their way. And they get on the bandwagon, and anytime they're trying to do something good, they get all the support from the liberals, and then a band of conservatives comes in. I think they were talking about the 15-minute city or something like that, and there's these, these conspiracy theorists that think it's about a new world order, trying to restrict where you live, Hunger Games type stuff, which it isn't. Um, and I think some of the liberals have made a few mistakes in presenting it, um, which contributes to that, etc. But it, it's got me thinking, I've always thought about this, it's a really sad thing that active transportation, and transportation in general, is really separated into a, a liberal and conservative camp. You know, so many people I know automatically write cycle lanes or safe pedestrian infrastructure, uh, they write it off as a liberal claptrap. Uh, because they think it's all just about equity for people that uh, often have not. And it's there to try to punish people that have. And I can understand that perspective. Because the people that have can afford to, to own a private automobile and pay for the gas and everything else. But the problem with it is it's, it's a publicly funded infrastructure. And our built environment is really organized around it. But what I can't understand is why many conservatives can't see how embracing uh, cycling, active transportation, and um, healthy environment is an expression of conservative values, traditional conservative values. Now, there's a difference between current songs in the hymn book for political players and the uh, and the actual values. As an example, liberals talk about diversity and embracing diversity, but absolutely shut down viewpoints that are not consistent with their worldview. So you know that they're not they're not embracing true liberal values. Similarly, conservatives don't understand the value or their own value and how, how cycling and, and, and active transportation promotes uh, and is, uh, their own values. So if I take these one at a time, the first one is going to be freedom. Freedom of choice. Uh, this is intimately tied to the concept of free markets and the idea that the more options there are out there, the more choices people have, the more freedom they have within the market to explore their own individual desires and interests. And I've experienced limitations in my freedom a lot as a cyclist. You know, I walk, I cycle, I do transit, and I drive. And I've experienced many, many limitations on a regular basis. You don't see it until you actually start trying to choose alternatives. But you realize that the system is built really for one mode and one mode only, primarily, which is the private automobile. So, and a, if we're going to invest at all in public infrastructure, it should not be to support a monopoly. It should not be to, for, to socially engineer people into one way of doing things. They should have the freedom to do things the way they, they choose, to move their bodies the way they choose. But so many people are just stuck. They're so stuck that they say, how am I going to get anywhere? You take away this lane or you take away my capacity. You, you want to take away my capacity because 
maybe half of half of six lanes are going to be proposed to be allocated for a, a two-way cycle lane, but they can't fathom losing even half half of the six lanes they have, half of one of the six lanes they have, because they're so dependent upon uh, driving. And that's not a, that's not freedom. That's not a free choice. By the way, people, there's parking behind the four square. Feel free to park there. Don't open your door. Don't door me. Thank you. Thanks for not dooring me. Appreciate it. Um, well, I said, oh. So, freedom of choice. Giving people freedom of choice. Uh, as opposed to limiting their freedom through social, social engineering projects like massive, expensive, uh, uh, car-oriented infrastructure is certainly a conservative value. Freedom, freedom, free market. Now, a lot of people say, well, the free market's already chosen the, the, what they want. Free market had nothing to do, well, had a, very little to do with the dominance of the automobile industry. That was all social engineering in the mid 20th century. That, and, and it was well-meaning, you know, producing the suburbs, prosperity, the thought that, that transportation conduits were not going to be a limiting factor in our ever-expanding growth outward. Uh, that, was just, that was just an unintended consequence of, of uh, auto-dominated social engineering. And, and liberals won't acknowledge that that was kind of a liberal uh, thing that, that uh, was also supported by big business, the auto. Yeah. The auto and the oil industry. Second is autonomy and personal responsibility. Okay? Conservative idea, conservatism is big on the idea of people taking care of themselves, not relying on other people to take care of them. And give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish, and he can choose to eat vegetables if he'd like. Or he can go fishing. The more options he has, the more choices he has, the more freedom he has in determining how he explores his life. So, um, just a little space. A little space on the side of the road gives people the option to transport themselves. And if they don't have a car, they're not coming to the government to say, I need to have a car. They're not going to do a GoFundMe and say, hey, can you somehow buy me a car because I'm dependent upon cars to get wherever I want to go. Uh, they have the freedom and the ability to uh, exercise their personal responsibility to take care of themselves. Uh, and they can learn that personal responsibility uh, through walking and cycling at an age you know, 10, 15 years before most adults have that opportunity in a car. They can do it by walking or biking around their neighborhoods uh, or to school with children. So personal responsibility is, is uh, a huge and important value of the active transportation philosophy. Uh, third, uh, fiscal responsibility. Uh, small government. Um, again, touched on this a little bit with the uh, you know, large-scale social engineering uh, projects like, like the interstate roads and the, just our road network in general. Ex extremely expensive to, to produce and maintain these roads, especially compared to uh, cycling and walking infrastructure. So uh, it is entirely fiscally responsible to invest more in the, the, the systems that provide the greatest return on investment, which has been shown over and over that return on investment in cycling infrastructure is positive. Uh, most studies show between uh, two to one and 20 to one, some places 40 to one, um, in improvements in our returns on investment. So that's, and there's very few, if any, car projects that have that level of return. Hiya, hiya.
uh, active transportation contributes significantly to uh, localism, uh, which is a significant, significant contributor to uh, small business entrepreneurism. Uh, that's, oops, I forgot my coffee. Those, I believe, are conservative values. Community, localism, uh, small business, entrepreneurship, those are all very important values. Now, I think that's also a value for liberals, too. I think many liberals believe in localism, um, local engagement. Um, so I think there's alignment there. But I think it's definitely, when you consider traditionalism, um, it's about your local community. Uh, auto and infrastructure um, supports corporatocracy, drive-through world. Um, once you get in your car, uh, you, um, you're much more likely to go to Costco than your corner grocer. You're going go to you're gonna go to Walmart. You're going to go to Target. You're going to go to the Mall of America. You're less likely to go to your shops down the street. You're with, which are more likely owned by your neighbors. Uh, people who also um, you are accountable to and they, they are accountable to as neighbors and members of the community. So localism, entrepreneurship, uh, very significant conservative values that um, are demonstrated and enhanced through active transportation modalities. That was, what was that, four? Um, I think if you even look at the, um, the, the religious values about the, the caring for your body, um, uh, I, I think you can make a case there that uh, caring for your body, caring for your mind through active transportation um, is, is uh, there's an alignment there as well. Um, I think it's stretching things a little bit. I think you could even talk about the environment, caring for the world, the environment. Uh, interestingly, that seems, even though that seems like it should be a, a conservative value, it's kind of fallen off um, the playlist, you know, uh, for them. Um, and I think some people, I think you know, many moderates still believe in it, uh, moderate conservatives believe in it. Um, but when you look at the, the radical the radicalization of politics, um, uh, there are certain things that if, that if there's any sense of overlap with either the moderate or the other side, uh, it's toxic, so you don't touch it. But I think I've made a pretty good case for um, the, uh, the, the active transportation uh, and the ability of promoting active transportation in its in its um, promotion of conservative values. I like I'd like to see more conservative people understand that, acknowledge that, embrace that, and not reflexively, automatically decide that anything that that smells to them a little bit like liberalism is awful. You know, the friend of my friend is not always my friend, and the enemy of my enemy is not always my enemy. And that goes for ideas as well. Um, we just need to think a little bit more. We need to be a little more independent in our, our thought and our expression of our values. My two cents.